April chat video where I kind of just fill you in on some things going on in my personal life, um, with the channel, and anything else that I feel like just chatting about. So let's do it. Um, first of all, I want to give, um, I don't know if I should be apologizing necessarily, but it turns out there are a lot of you, a significant amount of you who, as it turns out, hated my intro music before I changed it. And I had no idea if I would have known you guys had such strong feelings about it, then I would have changed it a long time ago. I obviously liked it. And all I ever heard from people was that they liked it too. And that their kids would sing along to it and they would recognize it as my videos. Like friends and family just kind of walking by in the room would hear the little jingle and be like, oh, she's watching sewing videos. But so many of you were like, thank God you changed your music. I hated it before. And I'm sure maybe there's a whole bunch of you out there now who hate the music that, the new music that I had to, to use. Basically what happened was that music that I was using was free. Um, and then I guess they didn't want it to be free anymore. And so they hired some kind of agency. And so the agency was flagging my video every single time I was posting something. So easy enough to swap it out. And I swapped it out for like a YouTube approved song so it will never happen again but it's good enough for now finished is better than perfect I know I'm not gonna be able to please everybody especially when it comes to something so specific as music so but I just thought it was hysterical that like as soon as I changed it so many of you were like well now I can tell her how I really feel about the song <laughs> so happy to make your life a little bit better you don't have to mute it anymore you can bop along to the song now um, okay, next up, so what you may or may not know is this past Thursday was National Zipper Day. Fun, right? So all week long, I have been posting little 30 second clips and videos uh, with tips and tricks regarding zippers. All of this is happening on my Instagram. So if you wanna go check that stuff out, if you wanna get like more content from me and more information, it's not just like me posting pictures behind the scenes. It's like also informational stuff that never makes it to the channel. Um, so head over to Instagram, give me a follow there and check out all the zipper content that I've got coming for you. I'm also going to be posting all of my Me Made May stuff there. And I guess, yeah, I, I'm going to throw this out there to you guys. I'm, I'm a little bit stuck on what to do for Me Made May. Most people post a picture of something that they've made they wear something that they've made every single day in May and then post a picture of that, which I can absolutely do. That's not a problem. I've got more than a month's worth of clothes, but I just feel like you guys see everything I make already and you see it on me and everything else. So I'm not entirely sure that that would be interesting to you. And so I've been trying to think of other ways to participate in Me Made May. It can be anything you want. There's like no strict rules. So I was kind of thinking, well, maybe it would be fun to like go through like each area of my closet and like kind of purge some things and show you, I mean, cause some of those things are years and years and years old and maybe discuss why I'm not keeping it, um, whether it doesn't fit anymore, it's not my style anymore, it doesn't fit my lifestyle anymore. Um, would that be interesting? That kind of also feels boring. I don't know. Um, if either of those ideas sound like something you would want, let me know in the comment section and I'll just go with whatever the majority people tell me that they would rather see. Um, I guess in a way I could incorporate both. So if you're into both, maybe just you can leave both in the comments. I don't know. I don't know what to do for Me Made May. Um, today is the first day of Me Made May. I'm filming this on Saturday and I've got my beloved Liberty Knit, Liberty Jersey Cotton Knit. Um, I think it's like seashells and starfish and stuff. I don't know the names of them and what they're all called. And this is a blank slate Catalina. One of my favorite makes of all time. This is several years old too, but I still love it and still wear it. So maybe that would be interesting to kind of go through my older makes. Maybe things that I haven't worn in a while and maybe say why. Maybe things that I really only wore once. There are some things that fall into that category for sure. Um, usually regarding fit <laughs> is the reason why I never wore them again. They're just not comfortable. Um, okay. So yeah, just let me know what, 
what you'd like to see over on Instagram for Me Made May. All right, so that is pretty much it that I have for like channel stuff. Um, you guys are buying up the Fast Fit Workbook. I love that so much. I would love to hear from you guys as you're using it um, and let me know kind of what you think of it, how if it's helping, how it's helping. Um, I would just like, like some feedback from you guys, whether you paid for it or got it for free. Um, a Mother's Day gift guide went out. That was a lot of fun. If you're looking for a gift for a mom who sews, um, I've got some of my favorite products and kind of like why they're good for moms. It's not just like a random, everybody likes this, you know. Um, a lot of them are very specific to time saving, to um, like uh, body positivity type of stuff as it relates to a mom, to things that um, make your life easier, get things done faster, better, more accurate, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, and I think that's it. That's it for the channel. I am working on the Sew Along. That will premiere the first video in the Sew Along, episode one, will appear on the 18th. And then early, early next week, I'll have episode zero, which is pattern, fabric, notions, um... I'm going to show you how I pick my size using the fast fit workbook and any alterations that I'm going to make to my version. Um, so if you're interested in seeing kind of how I get to episode one, um, you'll want to check that video out for sure. Episode zero. It's not technically part of the sew alongs. We're technically not sewing, um, but I do like providing that information for you guys. So that'll be there. All right. What I bought. So I didn't actually buy a lot. Um, I did make a trip to Joanne, but I just got notions. I got elastic. I got some stay tape. I got, no, I don't think I got any fabric. Did I get, I don't think I got any patterns that trip. I got bias tape, you know, all the boring stuff. Um, I did make a trip out to Hobby Lobby. So my Hobby Lobby is like 35 minutes away and the Joanne is like 15 minutes away. So I just, end up making it to the Joanne a lot more frequently. But I did go to the Hobby Lobby. I was unimpressed with their fashion fabric. They did have the Robert Kaufman linen blend, which I thought was the Essex, Essex linen or whatever. I did think that was interesting. You could get that there, but it didn't feel like it wasn't cheaper or anything. So I was just like, well, I don't know. And then I did pick up some of, they had like a rayon rib knit that I thought would be a nice for like a summer tank. Um, but I'm not like, oh my God, this is the best stuff since sliced bread. I'm just kind of like, oh, okay, we'll just give this a go and see what it is. It's very thin, very thin, very slinky. So it's going to be not necessarily like super fitted, but it is going to be clingy, which I'm okay with. It's going to be something I probably just tuck in anyways. And then I picked up every single fabric that they had with a B on it. <laughs> I think between Joanne and Hobby Lobby, I am, I've got, I've cleared them all out of the bee fabrics. I don't need very much to make honey something. Um, so I'm just getting like a half a yard whenever I see it. But like, I just go to the counter and say, um, I have all these bee fabrics that I found myself, but is there anything I'm missing? And they'll be like, oh yeah, over there in the yellow section or over there that, you know, and so I'll, I'll just add it all in. And they're like, what, what's with all the bee fabric? And I tell them the story and they think it's really cute. And it's like a whole thing. Um, so that's really all I bought sewing wise. I did get some indie patterns. Let's see. I got the pattern for Sew Together 21 in May is the Love Notion Sunday romper. They had it as their $5 Friday a couple weeks ago. So I went ahead and grabbed that. If you missed that sale, but still want to participate in Sew Together, there may be, I mean, I don't know for sure, but there may be another sale coming up next week. Not as good as $5 Friday, but a sale nonetheless. Maybe. I don't know. And maybe you'll hear more about it in my plans video. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know anything. I don't know anything. Um, what, did I get any other indie patterns? I don't think so. I'm trying to remember the ones that I got printed. <clears throat> Didn't get anything else. So yeah, that's really it. Kind of a light shopping month, um, which is honestly pretty good because Joanne was cranking out those pattern sales and I was just whew, spending, like every time I go there for a pattern sale, I easily spend $50, maybe a little bit more if I get some patterns and some fabric. 
All right, so let's head over to the rapid fire. Oh, before I forget, there are a few of you who are highly invested in honey content and I appreciate that so, so, so much. So I wanted to explain how come honey is not ending up on the channel that much. One, today she's not even here. I take her to daycare and I tell you, you guys, it is a relief. <laughs> Whenever I'm able to pass her off to someone else who's going to take care of her all day long and I don't have to worry about her, she's just a lot. She doesn't sleep very much. She's very active. She, as you maybe have seen in like some of my Instagram stuff, she's always around me, always on my feet, you know, always, always around. So in order for me to get anything significant done, like, you know, mopping the floors, like filming videos, like if I'm doing a bunch of videos in one day, it's just a lot easier for her to not be here. So once a week I'm taking her to doggy daycare so I can get a whole bunch of stuff done and not have to like scream at her and yell at her. I just, it's not a good, a good symbiotic kind of balance for either one of us. So she goes off and has a great time with all of her buddies and I'm able to get a whole bunch of stuff done. But I did want to tell you that two things. One, she will be appearing on the channel more now because I am making her clothes and I'm somehow magically able to film her in these clothes without like making you guys motion sick. Um, so I'm gonna be doing like dog pattern reviews, dog pattern pattern reviews. It's not gonna take the place of Me Made Monday, but they're gonna appear on the channel probably one a month. So you'll get to see her. Um, she grew out of, I had to, so I got the smallest harness that they had at PetSmart when I first got her. She was like stepping out of it. She couldn't, it was like so big. So I ended up having to get her a cat harness. Well, she grew out of the cat harness this past week and now she is in that, the smallest dog harness that they have, not stepping out of it, like it fits now. So part of me is like, oh man, she's so big. You know, she's growing up. Um, obviously she's still small, but I don't know. She was so whittled just for like the littlest bit of time. I guess I took it for granted and thought she would be that little forever and she wasn't. Um, so yeah, moving her into the big girl harness was like a moment. <laughs> um, okay. So the second part of the honey thing is I do post more honey content on my Instagram. So if you want to see some more of her, you can, um, you just have to go follow me on Instagram. That's all I have to say about that. Okay, rapid fire, what I'm reading. This one is called Clara and the Sun by Sir Kazuo Ishiguro, Japanese man who now lives in London. He won the Nobel Prize for Literature, which isn't necessarily just for a specific book, but he has, what, three or four of his books shortlisted for the Booker Prize. So this guy's pretty legit. Um, he was writing, um, writing, writing, writing constantly and then took a huge break. He was like, he published a book in 82, 86, 89, 95, 2000, 2005, rocking and rolling, right? Then he took a break for 10 years, didn't publish anything. Um, came out with one book since then and I'm reading the second book since he has started publishing again. It's called Clara and the Sun. It is about, it's like a little bit artificial intelligence, a little bit, it's artificial intelligence in a modern world with like a teenager-y angsty kind of vibe, mother-daughter tension, um, girl meets girl, boy, love tension. So it kind of reads like young adult, but in a, with this underlying theme of like artificial intelligence. I'm not that far through it. So I don't know like how all of these characters fully developed and how the story fully develops, but there's been a lot of laying of the groundwork. Um, and I feel like things are going to start picking up here shortly. I'm super excited to be introduced to this author. I love that he's Japanese, kind of speaking to my culture a little bit. I've been kind of trying to find ways to bring Japanese culture or at least Japanese people and artists and creatives into my life. Um, I got a new Japanese cookbook, um, you know, little things like that. So this was kind of like an effort to kind of not necessarily explore my own culture because the book is not about Japan at all. Um, but, you know, 
w reading something from a Japanese man, you just, I don't know, you just feel more connected to it in a way. So I've enjoyed doing that. So that is what I'm reading. And my, oh, what I'm watching. I just started watching Friends from the beginning. <laughs> Friends is on HBO Max, all 10 seasons, every single episode. So that's what I've been putting on. Um, I watched it when it first aired. Never went back and rewatched it. Never really watched the reruns when they come on as well. I don't know. I don't. I don't know why. But the idea of being able to watch it with no commercials, um, I'm, I'm paying a lot of attention to the fashion since '90s fashion is so hot right now. Um, the first season premiered in 1995. So what I'm seeing is a lot of crop tops, a lot of t-shirts, a lot of like graphic t-shirts, um, a lot of overalls or pinafore or strappy things. Um, a lot of like oversized blazers, kind of like loose fitting trousers, um, a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, so that's been really fun. And then it's like, oh yeah, I remember that happened. And oh yeah, you know, like, you know, the big overarching storylines, but sometimes you forget about like the little ones. Um, so that's what I've done. I'm on season two. I don't know how long it's going to take me to get through all 10 seasons, but that's just what I decided to do because I couldn't find anything new. I know everyone's talking about The Handmaid's Tale, but I'm afraid. I'm afraid to start watching that. I'm afraid I'm not going to like it or I'm afraid I don't know if I I don't know if I'm going to like it and then I'm going to be like the person that doesn't like it. So which is worse? The person who's never seen it or the person who doesn't like who has seen it and doesn't like it? Like I am that way about a lot of things like uh Game of Thrones. Didn't like it. Um, the British one on PBS didn't like it. So like, why even bother trying with Bridgerton? Like, I don't think I'm going to like it. Um, uh, why even try with Handmaid's Tale? I don't think I'm going to like it. Um, so we'll just go with an easy breezy friends. And because the episodes are so short, it's literally like, you know, one a night kind of thing. Anyway, so that's what I'm watching. Nothing exciting. If you know of anything that's really, really good, a, a very well-developed series or something like that, I have all the things. I have all the platforms. I have Stars, HBO Max, Apple TV Plus, Netflix Prime, regular cable TV. I have it all. Um, I just, I just need something to get invested in again. So, um, all right, my latest obsession. My latest obsession has to be like deep cleaning. Um, I actually rented a professional carpet cleaner and like busted it out, broke a sweat, whole nine yards, um, cleaning my carpet. And I am going to tell you guys, I keep up after my carpets, honey and sunny don't go on the carpets. Like they're not allowed in those rooms. The carpet was disgusting. The water was so gross. So gross. So I'm so happy I did that. All the rooms just smell so much fresher. Um, the rooms smelled clean. You know, they never smelled bad. But they didn't really, I don't know. It's kind of stale, I guess. And now it just, it just feels so different. So I've been doing that. I have been... Um, like reorganizing a few things, you know, I live a pretty organized life as it is. Um, but I've just been like, you know, perfecting some things. I got some new stuff for the fridge, you know, to make sure that is, um, I got, uh, something else for my spice cabinet. So that's perfect now. So just like, yeah, fine tuning a lot of those kind of like little drawers and little cabinets and little things, um, so that they are, perfectly organized, not just like sort of organized. And for me, perfectly organized is probably something that regular people would look at and think, oh my God, that's a little bit over the top, but that's how I like it. I like to just know, I like to be able, you know what it is? This is how I know when something's organized. If I can tell Dan, Dan, go get a polyester zipper in six inch length and he can go do that that's when I know it's organized and he could do that that's how organized my zipper collection is you can see it on Instagram it's one of the things that that I posted for zipper week um if I can tell Dan hey go grab me the cereal 
from the pantry. He can grab it right away. It's not like, which one? Is it this? Is it that? Blah. No. Hey, Dan, go grab me everything I need to make a smoothie. He's got it because it's all in one little tray. Um, go find me this spice that he can do all of that. So that's how, that's my beta test for, or my litmus test for if something's organized or not. If I say, go find this and he has a question, then I'm like, nope, I got to find another way to organize that. <laughs> Um, okay, what I am trying, so I gotta say, I'm not really trying a whole lot. The only thing that I could possibly say is like new that I'm trying is uh, with regarding planning. So I used to be a kind of weekly planner with like a tinge of daily planning. I am now converting to more of a daily planner where every single day, 6 a.m., 8 a.m., whatever I'm doing at all these times, exact tasks for that day are getting put down. That's something new that I am trying. Um, I am a planner by nature. I love to check things off. I love to make lists. So that aspect of it is not difficult. What's hard for me is knowing what I can get done in a day versus, okay, here's everything we've got to get done for the week, you know, and then it comes Friday and I'm like, well, crap, I only got half that stuff done. Oh, well, just put it on next week's. Now it's like every day that is happening. Like, oh, I didn't get all that done. Now I just move it over to tomorrow. Well, tomorrow is kind of already full. So I really need to kind of try and get it done today. And so it's helping me stay more accountable and it's helping me, I, I don't know, just like, I guess, yeah, I guess just stay accountable. So, I mean, I guess that's something new I'm trying. It's a very personal thing, planning, how you plan, how you get things done, if you make lists, if you don't. Like, so I don't expect for anybody to hear me say that and do their planning any differently. If you're not planning, if you're not writing out a list of what you need to get done, every day, every week, every month, whatever it is, you're really missing out. Planning is like life, life saving for me, for sure. I would not be able to do this job if I, if I didn't have a very detailed planner, very much. All right, so what to expect in May? I think we talked about this a little, little bit, but we've got the Sew Along coming up starting May 18th. We've got Me Bay May happening on social media. Um, finishing up zipper week here. We've got um, Sew Together 21 pattern, the Sunday romper from Love Notions. Um, I've got two skill pop classes. That's something that I haven't mentioned. We're doing machine basics again, also on the 18th at 5.30 p.m. And we're doing a zipper pouch class. So if anyone you know, I don't expect for you guys to need to learn how to use a sewing machine, but if anybody you know has been begging you, please teach me how to sew. Now you can just send them to this class. Lindsay will teach you. Once she shows you how to use your machine, you make a zipper pouch, come on over, and then you'll have a new sewing buddy. Um, that's kind of how I envision that working. We are working toward a serger class. So just like Sewing Machine Basics, this will be Serger Basics. So those of you that have a serger and it's collecting dust in some closet somewhere because you're afraid to use it, afraid to change the thread, I know there are some of you out there. So this is for you. Also, for those of you who are kind of on the fence about whether or not you should buy one or not, how difficult it is to use, you could take the class, it's 20 bucks, see how it works, see how everybody else does in the class, and then use that to determine if you even want to buy one or not. Then if you do buy one, the class is available on a recording. So you could go back and watch it anytime you wanted to help, you know, teach you how to use the machine and stuff. So that's really exciting. That will be sometime in June. I cannot believe we're talking about June. Um, so yeah, that's what to expect in March. And there you have it. That's all I have to chat about for this month. I love it when you guys participate in the rapid fire. So if you want to let me know what you're watching, what you're reading, what you're obsessed with and something new you're trying, by all means, leave 
that information, one or all of them in the comment section. I absolutely love hearing what you guys are into. Um, I know I asked you guys for a lot of other things in the comments, so go ahead and leave those too. <laughs> and I'll just spend a lot of time in there taking in everything from you guys. But that is going to do it for me today, y'all. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you very soon. Bye.